Hey there, Dolphins fans. Welcome into today's show. I am Tom Downey. We're taking a look at three free agent targets floated out there by Bleacher Report. Fun fact, they are actually all on the offensive side of the football. We'll break them all down on today's show. But first, if you guys are a real diehard Dolphins fan and you want even more videos and or news if and when the uh, Dolphins eventually sign Dalvin Cook or make moves or just want training camp coverage, You've come to the right spot. Hit that sub button for me right now. No surprise to anybody, I think, the first player on this Bleacher Report free agent targets list was Dalvin Cook. I mean, I can't say we're surprised, right? That, that would be, I think, pretty much everyone watching and myself and producer Chris's first target for the Dolphins. Of course, it's Dalvin Cook leading the way. He's the most obvious connection to the Dolphins in free agency. He has been tied to this team for... Feels like months now, which it kind of has been if you go back to the whispers and rumors of a potential draft trade that fell through, and then when he was cut by the Vikings uh, after the June 1st deadline there, or around the June 1st deadline, I should say, this one just makes sense to me, and I think it's pretty, for the most part, I should say, well thought out by Bleacher Report. They write the potential addition of Dalvin Cook could turn the Dolphins from playoff contender to Super Bowl challenger. Cook would give the Dolphins a more well-rounded offense, and it would be one that most defenses would fear. Adding Dalvin Cook does make the offense better. I want to make that part clear. It does make them more well-rounded. I would say that opposing defenses already fear the Dolphins' offense when two is healthy because of how electric and dynamic Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell are. I will also point out this point. Even though I'm on board with the Dolphins getting Dalvin Cook, when was the last time a running back put an NFL team over the top, so to speak, made them a legitimate, real Super Bowl winner? The answer is Emmett Smith. It's been a very long time. That's just not how the NFL game is built anymore. Now, with that said, again, I would still add Dalvin Cook. I, I think he is on, on the decline. The numbers bear that out. Five yards per carry, 4.7 yards per carry, 4.4. That is regression to a T. The yards have dipped against the carries. He's not five. He's not a. I don't think he's a top ten back anymore, frankly. But I think he's probably still pretty damn good. I think he's better than what the Dolphins have on the roster right now. And especially given the unfortunate injury history of Raheem Mostert, of Jeff Wilson, with where the Dolphins are at, trying to win in the here and now, with Tua still on his rookie contract, I do think going after Dalvin Cook makes a ton of sense as an organization. As we sit currently, there are five teams that have been really linked to Dalvin Cook so far. Obviously, the Dolphins. The Jets have been linked by multiple outlets. The Patriots, to an extent. Denver has always been a popular speculation target, but they might think Javon Williams is going to be fine. With Samaj P. Ryan, Cook might not be as big of a need. The Vikings, as we broke down on Thursday, or the Thursday show, are allegedly in the mix as a team that has made an offer to bring him back, although I don't know if that's true and or if Cook even wants to go back anyway. So back to our favorite question in the last couple weeks here on the show. Predictions. Will the Dolphins end up signing Dalvin Cook? Y for yes, N for no if that ad happens to play here on YouTube. That's fine. Take advantage of said ad, go down to the pinned comment, and type in Y for yes or N for no. Another running back on the list, Leonard Fournette. And this one, I don't despise. It's not like, it's not like you're you know, suggesting you sign you know, I don't know, Adrian Peterson. But it's not the one that really gets me excited in the same way that Dalvin Cook does. In the event the Dolphins actually just want a second back, which I'm not sure is the case. I think they just want big impact piece in Dalvin Cook. Then I do think Fournette is the second best back over the likes of you know, Ezekiel Elliott, a Kareem Hunt, uh, a variety of other players who maybe aren't that good anymore. So I think as RB2 in free agency, Fournette does make sense. Here's the argument from Bleacher Report that I don't, I don't really agree with here. See, they write, Fournette did not record a 1,000-yard season in his three years with the Buccaneers. However, the 28-year-old did make a significant impact during the Buccaneers' playoff runs. That could be a factor that convinces the Dolphins to sign Fournette over Cook and other running backs on the market. They are right, of course, that Fournette did not rush for 1,000 yards. Um, the issue is Fournette in the last two playoff runs for Tampa did not make a sizable impact. 
He uh, against the uh, the I'm drawing a blank here. The, the Rams, 13 carries, 51 yards, two two touchdowns. Okay, nine catches, 56 yards. That's not bad. But this is not the same playoff Lenny we saw back in 2020. So the argument here is to sign Fournette for what he did two years ago in the playoffs. That doesn't really move the needle for me. If you're signing a running back, give me Dalvin Cook. Give me the guy who I think still has more left in the tank. And you know what? I, I, I understand I want to spend big money right now. It's July. There's not a lot of players out there. You want to keep some cap flexibility uh, for what's going to come down the line when, you know, Christian Wilkins, uh, take two of the time lowers, do for new deal, Jalen Waddle, Phillips, et cetera. I, I get all that. I'll still pay extra for the better player. And that might be like three or four million bucks. That's not going to make or break the bank for me in the end. So if it comes down to Cook or Fournette, give me Dalvin Cook every day and twice on Sunday. In the event that Cook is gone and you need a, a back, maybe we can then revisit Fournette. Speaking of revisiting things, these Dolphins draft hats are still available and on sale, 25% off at chatsports.com slash Dolphins Draft. That link will be in both the comment section and the description of today's show. So you can check it out, get the hats you guys want. They got a couple of different styles. You saw the, the flat brim, the rounded brim, some color scheme changes there too. Fantastic deal. The draft is over. The, the hats are cool. So that's what matters, right? Get 25% off chatsports.com slash Dolphins Draft. The third possible free agent target, we're going to stick in Tampa. About Cameron Brait, the tight end, and most recently with the Buccaneers. Uh, I would rank him second on this list behind Dalvin Cook. There are some concerns I have in terms of how much does Brait have left in the tank, but I do understand the mindset here. So pick one of these three guys to sign. DC for Dalvin Cook, LF for Leonard Fournette, or CB for Cameron Brait. Of these three guys, you only pick one. I think I know the answer, though. Who's it going to be? When it comes to the tight end market, it's not a very good one uh, at the moment. And I do think you can make a strong argument that Cameron Brait is the best one who is available among the unsigned players. Here's a Bleacher Report argued in favor of Brait to Miami. The former Tampa Bay tight end would give the Dolphins an extra red zone threat who is capable of doing more in that area than Durham Smythe, uh, Tyler Croft, Eric Staubert. Brady's coming off a season in which he played 11 games because of injuries, but he is. But if he is fully healthy, he could be a nice addition to the roster. I think uh, acknowledging the lack of talent to a certain extent in the tight end room is fair. I'm a little bit worried about it. I do think in the end these guys will be asked to block more because the targets are going to go to Waddle and Hill and who can blame them. The biggest issue I have with Cameron Brait is, you know, he had that 660-yard season. His numbers have dipped for th every year since 2019. He's had one year over 300 yards since 2018. He's not that 50-catch, 600-yard, eight-touchdown player he was earlier in his career. I don't really know how much more he has left in the tank. Then again... The options aren't very good elsewhere. Uh, some of their top free agent tight ends, Michael Pruitt, which sounds like uh, a bad name for the NBA 2K23 My Career Mode. Why they call you MP? I feel stupid. Anyway, Max Williams, okay, former second rounder, hasn't done much. Jeff Swain can block. Mercedes Lewis can block. Eric Tomlinson can block a little bit. Though that's not like a needle-moving group of tight ends. So I guess Cameron Brait makes sense. You might just maybe want to wait for a trade, potentially, or see who gets cut around roster time, because I think tight end's a need. I just don't like the options out there, really, for Miami.